So I just wanted to quickly go ahead and share my thoughts on this Donald Trump Brady shooting. Um, as you know, I am out here in the wilderness, so I'm a little bit later. And of course, I don't want to be too reactive. It's very important, guys, to not get plugged into the proverbial matrix in a state of reactivity at all times. It's very disempowering. And we must invest internally more so than externally, because then we are playing their game. Nonetheless, as my supporters, longtime supporters know, I've done a great deal of research on this over the years, which is to say um, studying high-profile assassinations, alleged lone gunmen, and also to complement that, how the CIA and other shadowy groups really carry out high-profile assassinations to ensure they are successful and cannot be detected. So the first thing I want to just say to anybody that may be new to my work is I think that politics is utter bullshit. It's not part of the solution, it's part of the problem. So I'm not yet to promote tribalism, guys. So the first consideration to make is the very popular one, which is, oh man, Donald Trump, the system's trying to eliminate him, which to be frank is delusional, guys. It's bullshit. Consider this pragmatically from the perspective of the proverbial grand master chess players that are social engineers thinking 10 steps ahead. Why would they ever want to eliminate Donald Trump when he is campaigning for the presidency? This would turn him into a martyr. It will turn him into a revolutionary idea, which makes him infinitely more powerful in the minds of the people in inspiring them to rise up than it ever would as him just being a physical figure. So it's bad policy. So let's imagine then that they do. They want to make an example out of him, right? They want to JFK him. Well, in that particular case, what you do then is you have multiple gunmen or you have a big ass gun to ensure the job gets done. For the people out there that say, oh, this looks like an MK Ultra Canada to me, as somebody that's actually meticulously researched this particular topic, I can tell you that whether it was JFK or his brother RFK with Sirhan Sirhan or with James Holmes, the way the MK Ultra candidate works, guys, is that's supposed to be the fall guy. There's a professional backup shooter to always get the job done. Instead, what happened? He got his ear scathed and he had time to still do a nice fist pump for good publicity. Now, this leads me down the rabbit hole of my own personal research into how they rarely carry out these high profile political assassinations or the ideas that they have. And what we can do since the documents have been declassified and they are therefore in the public domain and online for you to fact check is we can explore projects, Artichoke, Bluebird, MK Ultra, and associated projects from several decades ago. Now, essentially what this was about, guys, is they got the leading doctors and scientists, some of the brightest minds in the world, to focus on how they can weaponize chemicals, how they can weaponize hypnotism, how they can weaponize drugs, how they can weaponize damn near anything for the purpose of behavioral modification and mind control and having an edge in covert warfare. And under that umbrella, they wanted to find out how can they weaponize a poison that once the target is eliminated, it'll leave such negligible traces that if an autopsy is performed, it would be impossible to attribute it to anybody. Instead, it would be chalked up to natural causes or this is because of pre-existing condition or something along those lines. In fact, a high profile target that they had in mind was the first democratically elected leader of the Congo named Patrice Lumumba. Now, they ended up scratching the poison plan when they found out they could actually just brutally go in there and assassinate him, which is what they did. Now, in correspondence with that, when it was discovered in the 1970s about this horrible program, they then moved their operations to South America. Now, for those who have done their homework, you may recall Operation Condor and the horrible dictatorship of Augusto Pinochet, which was backed by the United States. Now, they had a secret police that was trained by the CIA, known as the DINA. They were also led by a CIA asset that was on the payroll. They continued their work, and they also carried out high-profile assassinations, numerous ones, including on U.S. soil. Well, there was a guy, he was a famous poet, he was actually a Nobel Prize winner and a former politician, and he was a huge critic of the dictatorship, but more significantly of many U.S. government policies. Now, he managed to publish an article in the New York Times where he touched on many sensitive topics, including the Watergate scandal. Well, just a few months later, he ends up getting sick mysteriously and he dies from cancer. Well, lo and behold, several decades later, it's discovered that he was poisoned by the Dina. Likewise, a similar scenario, a former president of Chile who was an outspoken critic against the dictatorship, he also mysteriously died after surgery. Lo and behold, several decades later, it's discovered that he too was poisoned by the Dina. Now, both of these court cases are ongoing. They've been reopened, and there's a clear cover-up going on. Why? Because it partly implicates the United States, and also because they don't want people to really dig into and find out how high-profile political assassinations take place, because then people are going to become suspicious about many other mysterious deaths around the world. Now, I'll give you another example. There was a guy from the USSR. He was a political journalist. He moved to the UK. He thought he was safe. He's walking down the street. Da -da 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 -da. He feels a pinch in his leg. He looks around, he doesn't think too much of it, he sees a guy with an umbrella, no big deal. Well, it turns out this was a micro dart 
that poisoned him and invariably killed him. That's how sophisticated assassinations were several decades ago, okay? Half a century ago, guys. Today, that has become infinitely more sophisticated. They have nanotech. They have electromagnetic warfare technology. And the bio-warfare has become insane, all right? It corresponds to the way in which phones, or let's say how computers from several decades ago have now become what you have in your hand. That's how sophisticated it's become. Why? Because it is a priority for the parasite and psychopathic class to be able to assassinate and pacify people without being traced. And for people who really want to dig into this topic, I encourage you, go look into Operation Condor. Also, go look into Operation Gladio and associated operations in Europe. And what you're going to find is all of these mysterious suicides, these mysterious murders, people dying from health complications, so on and so forth. And they are never, ever solved because this is not amateur hour, guys. Unfortunately, these people are very proficient when it comes to doing psychotic acts of violence. And this is why I say that we need to stop this ridiculous mythology that the system is trying to eliminate Donald Trump. First of all, that's a bad strategy. And second of all, they could just pacify Donald Trump. They can turn him into a vegetable. They can ensure he can never speak again. He's an old guy. Give him a chronic illness. Instead, he is permitted to play his role, just as old man Joe Biden is permitted to play his role, because it is good for the drama and political theater that is politics. It keeps people plugged into the proverbial matrix. Now, let's just consider for the sake of considering it, that maybe it really was a lone gunman. Well, I would say that is as likely as being struck by lightning. During this climate, people are anticipating that, and historically, all the events that I've ever looked into, the way it's presented is always nonsense. The second thing is, was it maybe uh, some kind of lower-level conspiracy? Maybe he's a secret service team that's sick of his bullshit, they want to get rid of him? It's possible, but I highly doubt it. Instead, what is the most plausible and likely possibility is that this was a false flag attack, which is to say, not that Donald Trump is out there and he's writing the plans for doing this, but instead... There's an external group, there's an external actor, and they are the ones that engage in this. The public is completely unaware of them or the motives. And what they are waiting for is a predictable outcome. And that outcome is what will benefit them. And that right there, guys, is what I'm concerned with. Logically, we can deduce this is going to result in more tribalism, more division, more political theatrics, and it could result in more radicalism. Or, as we are now seeing with the media and Iran, it can be used in the traditional sense to blame an external enemy, thereby justifying going to war. And then lastly, for many, it's going to further inculcate the illusion that one man, Donald Trump, he's going to save the world. But the reality is, guys, we have an individual moral duty and responsibility to take serious ownership for the energy that we bring into this world. That the way we seriously vote is with our lifestyles, with the decisions that we make and how we choose to treat one another and what principles we choose to embody and personify. And then although there is a lot of uncertainty in this world surrounding this event and what may come next, what I am certain of is if we choose to put on the armor of the higher principles of humanity, of integrity, and of truth, not only will we find some guidance in this very divisive and deceptive time, but we can still then offer this guidance to our children and the future generations to come. So whatever comes next, guys, don't get sucked into the tribalism. Don't get sucked into the political theater. Look internally and remember that the real revolution starts within.